How we going, guys? Um, today, probably a really long overdue segment uh, for Patriot Campers sitting beside me. My father, Rob, Dad, thanks for um, having to sit down with me today. My pleasure, son. I think today, really what I want to go through, I don't think there is, besides me, I don't think there is anybody on this planet that has spent more time in a Patriot Camper than you. Correct. Yeah? Actually, you know what? Oh, I, I think I spent more time than you, I personally. Think, I think you actually have spent more time than me. If we go back to season one of Patriot Games, that first trip up the Cape, yes. yeah? Yep. Our first big R&D trip. Correct, I remember that one. You are obviously there for that, and then all the way through the years up until the current iteration of the new Patriot X-Ray, mm -hmm. you, you were the one that did all the R&D on the X-Ray, weren't Correct. you? Correct, yeah. 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 You've had every model of Patriot Camper, you know them all, you were heavily involved in the design of the X-Ray yep. when it came to touring and we were obviously trying to appeal more to comfort for, I know you don't like the term, but the Grey Nomads. Careful. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so the Grey Nomads is normally for the caravan guys, what do you call, call yourself? You guys have got a name for what you do, don't you? No, we're somewhere in between, what you do with your family Yep. and I guess the Grey Nomads. Yep. So on, the, on that note with the X-Ray, when it came to the design of the X-Ray, what were a couple of have to haves for you? What are a couple of the things that you really wanted from a camper trailer? Like everybody else, I think the, the critical factor was to keep Belinda happy, yep. content, and myself as well. Yep. And I think the biggest thing with the uh, X3 was the ability to just walk inside, zip up, mm. stand up, change, basically, and it ticked all the boxes that we actually needed. Because mm. the, I love all the campers, don't get me wrong, and I can, I can almost live in a, in a swag if I have to, but it's a comfort factor. Mm. The big size bed yep. in a spring mattress, yep. get a good night's sleep, because we go away for sometimes months on end. Yeah, yeah. Very remote. Well, the first the first R&D trip you did with the X-Ray before we launched it to market, how long were you gone for? That was about six weeks in Tasmania. Mm. Yep. And the first your first reaction when you first did that trip in the X-Ray, what did you what did you find worked oh. worked the best? There wasn't one specific item that worked the best. The whole concept just worked. Mm. It still took us still five minutes to set up. Mm. The beauty about it is that the first, uh, the, when we first landed in Tasmania, it was really adverse weather. It was raining, it was miserable. I remember, And yeah. the mere fact that we just could open up, go inside, yep. and spend the evening inside was just brilliant. Mm. Brilliant. That was the best part. And how important is it for, well, I mean, you kind of hit on it, but how important is it for your partner, I mean, the way Belinda, for her to be comfortable when you're living out of a trailer for six weeks? Look, it's everything. I've got to admit, Belinda's adaptable, mm. but now she can't go backwards. Mm. Unfortunately, what we've done is we've educated Belinda mm. to a lifestyle that she can't go back to a smaller, camper trailer. Yep. We're certainly nowhere near, even remotely close to getting a caravan, mm. but to go backwards, um, very difficult. It is very user friendly, the van. Why not a caravan? Look, I get asked that question this, this, this so is a, often. This is a bit of a joke in the household, right? Obviously, his son owns Patriot Campers. So, let's, let's, let's attack the white elephant. There's going to be a little bit of bias there, but <clears> I think, I know, Genuinely, genuinely, you're not ready. You don't want a caravan, do you? I don't want a caravan. Why? Why? Why not? Look, I get asked that question every time we go away with our friends. Uh, when we go to caravan parks, which we do from time to time, we're just not ready. I think once, and I will one day possibly maybe get a caravan. This fits the bill to a T. Mm. It does everything that we want it to do. I feel for caravan, it's more, you go away, you set it up for a long period of time, for three days, a week, two weeks, and you generally get to resorts. We're into extreme, not extreme, outdoor. We want to get away from the beaten track. I don't like tarmac. We want to go to places that people haven't been. With this trailer, it's got almost everything that the caravan's got. Admittedly, the caravan's got a few extra features. It's so close, yet we can go remote. We can go anywhere. I don't think we've been to a destination yet where we've had to unhitch. Yep. So it doesn't matter where we go. Well, we'll cross the Simpson Desert with Belinda, just Belinda and I. Mm. You can't do that with a, with a caravan. Mm. We've been to Dirk Hartog Island. 
That was your second trip with the X-ray, was it not? That, correct. That's when you got your own. When you got this, this and one. I got this, that's the trip that this one here did. Yeah. So we went to State Point. Yeah. Well, actually, I remember. So the first, so the first trip, Dad, we finished the X-ray. We done all the R and D, internal R and D, and then it was up to the usability test, right? So there was no one better than obviously than my father to go and test it in Belinda. You done that trip down to Tassie, that six week trip. You actually Correct. met with, met up with the Madrig on that trip, eh? By sheer coincidence, that's right. Actually, tell everybody the story, because I think we've got a little bit of B-roll there that we can put over the top of that. Look, I'll try and keep it really, really that, short. That, that, this is a cool story. We were looking for a remote destination. So we drove down uh, along the ocean front and we drove for about an hour. Very, very remote. Dirt road, not a soul in sight. Backtracked, decided to set up camp. Then in the distance, and there was not nobody, I saw a car coming, very faint, with a camper trailer, and set up camp in the distance. And I said to Belinda, I don't know why, but that looks like a Patriot camper to me. So, and Belinda actually said to me, don't be silly, you know, what would another Patriot be doing here in Tasmania so remotely? And I walked over and I said to the guy, one of the guys that was there, I said, mate, you don't happen to be Mitch? He goes, no, I'm not Mitch. And I thought, I felt like a fool. And he goes, but Mitch's over there in a Patriot camper. So I walked over and obviously introduced her to each other and uh, mm. obviously from then on we become friends and you guys spent a couple of what three four nights together something we like spent that? about yeah correct three or four nights together mm. then COVID hit we were in Tasmania and we said to Belinda you know this is the safest place in the world to be because yep. we got into the news to find out what was happening and then COVID came to Tasmania yeah and you guys bugged so out and they, we, got, they got stuck there yeah they got stuck there yeah. for about two months I think yeah. two or three months yeah that uh, that was a really cool story so from there, Dad went and did all the, he came back with the full list. We were talking, whenever you had reception, we were talking. Engineering team, we were sitting down, we were on speakerphone with Dad, and we started making a list of changes. Dad came back, we sat down, we went through the whole list of changes. We changed, the, I think there was, probably we ticked every box on, on changes. Yeah, that's very, very minor. Yeah, but, but everything was mainly ticked. usability stuff, eh? Yeah. Correct. So we changed all of that and then uh, we launched the X-ray and shortly after we launched it, you got your own, which is the one behind. And then that trip when you went to Der Car Talk, how long were you away for on that one? Oh, that was a good one. That was a long trip because that happened uh, after Think and we did the whole uh, West Coast. Three months? We about three months or just over three months, I think we were away on the road. Yeah, so that was must have been Think 2019? 2020. 2020 it would have been. 2020 I think it was. Yes, because on the border to Western Australia yep. that we had to stay an extra night because of COVID. Was that the trip you crossed the Simpson? No, 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 no. That was the previous year. That was the year before. Yeah. So uh, we did Fink and then after Fink Dad went away for about three months and tell us about some of the some of the destinations you oh, got to look. because your Facebook was unbelievable. I don't think yeah. I've ever been jealous of you. No, that's a lie. I have been a couple <laughs> of times, but I was really jealous watching your Facebook, what you guys did over those three months. And I think you spent, from memory, well, there was only three or four nights you spent in a hotel. I think the whole trip you were in the Patriot, were you not? That's correct. We stayed, uh, we went uh, glamping in uh, a resort. We do that to break it up. Because yep. when we went away, I don't know, you might recall, we went away, we said about three to four weeks. Yep. And then the second month came along, eight weeks, and everyone's saying, where are you? I said, well, we're coming, we're coming back, we're yeah. coming back. Yeah. And then it ended up being just over three months. Where'd you get but, to? Besides Dirk Hartog. And you tied the camper trailer over to Dirk Hartog. Oh, there, yes, we it? did. Oh, you put absolute, it on the barge and took it over. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I'm saying about the, the, why I'm not ready for a caravan. Steep Point is fairly remote mm. and difficult to get to. I'm not saying you can't do it for a caravan, but it'd be a real struggle. We did it easily. Then from the island, uh, from Steep Point, I said, well, hang on a sec, this is not really the furthest point west of Australia, because mm. Dirk Artok Island belongs to the mainland. So that's the furthest point. So we decided to go over. And luckily enough, said, look, the camper trailer, if you can tow it, mm. we'll take you over there, which yep. they did. Yep. And that was, that was epic in its own right. Yep. But there were so many epic parts of the whole trip. Yep. And living out, living out of the thing for that period of time, do you think, you know, going back to the whole caravan thing, because I mean, this is the big thing for me with you, is you're such an advocate for, you know, for the Patriot brand and specifically the X-Ray. And I know because, the, I mean, two of your sons, three of your sons have caravans. Mm -hmm. Three of them have, but they got young kids and they enjoy caravan parks and all the rest of it. 
do you think you miss out on that sort of community or not do you find a different one bit not one bit the beauty about with the x3 i feel we've got the best of both worlds we go to caravan parks but maybe once every three weeks mm. when we go out remote as you're touring as we're touring we yep. generally we go that. go it away we go to a caravan park we do our washing uh, chill out, go to nice restaurants, yep. whatever the, the area's got to offer, socialise with people, mm. and then we're back on the road. So we can do both. With the caravan, I can't do both. Yep. With the caravan, there is no way known that we could have been, not that we couldn't have been, but we couldn't have covered as much ground as we did. Mm. Plus, we went to the Pilbara. It's not caravan friendly. Yes, it is. If you're doing the bitumen, if you're doing the touristy things, but we don't do the touristy things. We embrace it and incorporate the touristy things, but we do the remote. You want to get where off people the don't track, go. Yeah. We don't unhook. In the three months that we're away, I could count on one hand the number of times I unhitched. Mm. I mean, we were in Hobart the previous trip, and once again, we were away for a while, we decided to go to a hotel was a little high rise and there was nowhere to park so we drove that thing in the basement car park. Yeah. And we parked in the basement car park. Yep. McDonald's drive through. Yep. Not that we eat McDonald's, just, but just we just drive it through. Well you do like when you're on the road and you want a quick meal and you're trying to bank K's and all the rest of it. The other thing that we find like even shopping centers. Correct. With our camper trailer. You see caravans, I see it all the time when you're in a remote town somewhere, you see a caravan parked a kilometre away from the shopping centre because they can't Correct. park anywhere. Yeah. We pull right in and we pull into a double car park. You do the same. because you I do, do it, it all us. the time. Go and do the shopping, bring the trolley out, load up, see you later. You're gone. But the other thing too that I find, and once again, while we're not ready, what I find is when we go into major cities, which we do, whether we're crossing Melbourne, Sydney, Geelong, Hobart, it doesn't really matter. In the main heart of the cities, even the smaller towns where they've got shopping malls and very narrow streets, you never see a caravan. Yeah. We go everywhere. Yeah, yeah. There's nowhere, if the car can go, we go. The trailer's there with it. There's no, there's, I'm saying, there's no unhitching, no matter where we go. What about storage? Where do you keep your trailer? Look, I keep it in, in, uh, in the garage. Yep. Unhitch, push it in the corner. And generally I'll have my jet ski or motorbike or something. So that car space would have been taken up by my motorbike or my jet ski anyway. But can I can, can fit we, it in. Can we, can we talk about how old you are now? How I feel or? Uh, no, how old are you? I'll be 70 in a few months time. So you just heard that. Patriot camper, motorbike, jet ski, 70 years old and still absolutely rocking it. Yeah, with the twins, you know, every other weekend doing something, going it. jet skiing together or you and I, up until recently, we used to ride together a fair bit. Actually, remember you had, you had that crash yes, out I of did. the dam? Well, I didn't crash. I didn't. You, you dropped it. Well, I didn't it. crash, you, I just put you it down. Okay, you, you <laughs> dropped it. So, you know, obviously there's, you know, how old you feel is is completely different to the age that you actually are, I think. Yeah. You know. Look, I agree, and we get back to the same situation that I get asked all the time, why, how come you haven't got a, a caravan? It's going to places like we do that makes all the difference. You, we're, not, we're not doing what the grey nomads are doing. No mm. disrespect, because I'm, I'm one of them. Mm. But we are able to go and have a social event in a site, yeah. but then we love going away, you remote go fishing, and you know, like where there's no people, where we can beautiful clear skies at night. Mm. You can, Look, once again, go and cross the Simpson Desert. Yeah. Um, Oh, well, remember, if you actually you think about that, um, and we'll, we'll, we will, we'll put in a bit of footage here of when we saw it. Remember when we flew over the top here in that, oh, that's that right. light I aircraft? That, yeah. And we knew that you were out there somewhere, but we had no idea that you were there. And I remember, you know, I was in that light plane with the kids, and we drove all the way through the night, so our eyes were hanging out of our head trying to get to think. I remember flying over the top and seeing you in that flood up yep. in those high jeans, towing your Patriot on your own in the yeah. middle of the Simpson Desert. Yeah. That was pretty yeah. cool. That was cool. That was a cool trip. Yeah. And I saw the plane, I said to Belinda, I wonder if that could be Justin up there. Yeah. And I was going to jump out well, of the we car. Well, we were flapping the wings. We were trying to... I was going to wave to you. Then, yeah. then I said to Belinda, well, if it's not Justin and I'm waving at a plane, that thing I'm... Stranded or something. Stranded yeah. and stressed. And I thought, no, I better not wave. Yeah. It's Justin, good luck. Yeah, we've had some unbelievable adventures. How much has the Patriot, I think, changed the family dynamic? 
How, how much is all of the family having Patriot campus? How much does it change the family Com dynamic? Completely. A, I think it actually is a bonding, puts us closer together. Mm. We have a common goal, a common objective mm. to go away. Um, but all the all the trips, all the young kids, my grandkids playing together. Mm. Going away remotely is totally different to me mm. than going to a caravan park. I've been with Catherine and Mitch, caravan parks, and the young kids interact with all the other kids in the yep. caravan park. So they go on a trampoline and do normal things that kids do, which is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with it. But when we go away to remote, they are forced to climb trees. They are forced to look, what, what's the frog doing? What's that fish in that pond doing? Yep. They're taking nature in. Mm. So to me, remote camping, without them knowing, they're getting educated in, in the world, what it's all about. Biggest thing for me on that note, yeah, I've never really thought about that, but when you said it, I think the biggest thing for me when we are remote camping is the kids have always been forced to spend time with us, yeah? I think we found when we used to do the resort thing, and I've never done the caravan thing, but I've been to caravan parks, exactly what you're saying is correct. And I suppose it's a good break for the parents as well, that you can let the kids go to caravan park, you don't have to deal with them, right? So it's a good break for the parents. But it's the same deal at the nights, you know, and we'd find if we were at resorts, me and Sarah would end up having dinner together on our own and not enjoying the family time to get the experience that we actually went away for. Yeah. I think a really good point, and I've never really thought about that, but when we do go remote camping, the kids are with us and they're, they're constantly with us. The interaction, the iPhones are off, they have no Wi-Fi reception and they're forced to sit around the campfire and not forced like being strangled. There's, they're forced to interact with the rest of the family and I think that's why we do it so well. That's why we love off-road racing so much, right? But when we go out racing and we've all got the Patriots and there's no internet and you know, how are the best nights that we ever have? Sit around cooking a meal all around the campus, sit around the campfire, Kids are interacting with you and you're with them, you know, you get that good bonding time with the family, you know. You and I only get to really have those those times now when we're out well, camping. It's funny you're saying that because it is so uh, true, it's not just for the kids. Mm. The time that we have when I'm when we go away and we've got Jamie and Chase and Bobby and all the kids together, we discuss things other than work, other yeah. than daily events, yep. other than how did the kids go at school today. We're talking about normal things, like mm. like it used to be, I guess. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, may, it forces without even knowing it. I've, ne I've never actually really, that's never really come to the forefront of my mind, but I think that's one of the best things. So where do you reckon my love of camping came from? Where do you reckon this whole Patriot campers thing came from? You grew up with camping. Did I? But not we like this. Well, we used to go camping. No, not like this. Not like this. But it was still camping. The principle of camp is still the same. Mm. You were a little toddler, you would have been that high, we've got my first four wheel drive, and and I think one of our first trips would have been Fraser Island. It was the Pajero was the first one, was it? Pajero, was it the, the white Pajero? The white Pajero. And then you Jacked had a, up tires you had a blue GQ, bigger. I remember that. Correct. We had a, another blue Pajero. Um, and then we Correct. went, and then you went Land Cruisers, and it was just Land Cruiser after Land Correct. Cruiser, right? Well, yeah, I've had probably what, six or seven Land Cruisers now. You're still driving Land Cruisers now. I still love got them. the new Thrower series behind us. Correct. You've always been towing the 200 series for Correct. the past since yeah. they come out. But yeah, getting back to it, what what was camping like for you with the family when we were kids? I got. Some oh, I still think it's one of the best times. Mm. They etched in my brain the times are going. I think in particular Fraser, we did many used to trips. Go to Fraser all the time. Yep. And you guys, in those days, it was a little bit different. There wasn't as many people on the beaches. There was no, Fraser, it, there to, was, Fraser back then, was pure, to me, it was, pure. it was like, I was going to say like Cape York is now, but Cape York's a tourist, a tourist spot now. Yeah. When we used to go to Fraser, you drive all day and you wouldn't pass a car when we were kids. Well, you might not remember, but the, the people that know Eli Creek, yep. we used to park on Eli Creek yep. and wake up and jump in the water in Eli Creek and, and have a shower that. and wash. And now you can't park within. I remember five us kilometers. all nude as kids and you and mum and like we'd bathe in Eli Creek at nine Correct. o'clock in the morning. Correct. You wouldn't see anybody. It was those memories for sure. And when, when we used to camp, we were like. And especially because I'm one, of, I'm one of eight kids, right? There's six boys, six brothers, and, and two daughters. So we used to do the whole family trips, but you and me, Jamie and Bobby specifically, I've got Correct. some awesome memories. Camping in the Tinnies, remember that day up at 
North Stratty in the mangroves, Backing running around, again. chasing fish and yeah. playing tag. And I remember all that sort of stuff as a kid. And I suppose they were the experiences that I wanted with my kids, you yeah. know? And they're the experiences that my kids got until we were like, right, we need to camp each other. That's yeah. what we need now. We need to make this a little bit easier. Yeah. So that's, I think that's definitely where it came from, mate. Well, I think you nailed it by, you enjoyed the camping so much, you just want to simplify it. Yeah. And that's what we get back to, the simplicity of traveling and having all the comfort creatures there. Yep. You've nailed it. It just changes everything, I Nailed it. Um, talk to me about set up and pack down. How do, how do you find the set up and pack down the X3? What do you like? What don't you like? What do you think <coughs> would be better? Look, the, the setup is brilliant. Uh, we get lots of comments, especially when we go into caravan parks. We can oh. set that up in under five minutes. That's from, it takes Belinda and I longer to decide where we want to face. What's the view? What do we want to wake up to? So we'll spend 15, 20 minutes getting to a destination, mm. figuring out where the sun's going to come up, but then to open the, the, the camper up, and we've timed it, less than five minutes from the time that we say, okay, let's set it up, mm. to the time the chairs open, tables out, everything's fully set up. And yep. we get a lot of comments in caravan parks. Sometimes we pull into a caravan park, and we get people from, Caravans coming still, up and say, "Holy mackerel, that was so quick!" Yeah, it's still up and yep. It takes them longer to unhitch a caravan mm. than for us fully set it up. What about pack down? Way to the lid, pushing that thing over. Do you, do you find it an issue? Or to be honest, the lid could probably be a little bit lighter. Mm. I don't mind it, but generally speaking, I said I asked Belinda to give me a hand. I can do yep. it on my own without any problems. I I, get I, look, I'm, I'm genuinely the same. I, Generally, when, I, uh, when I'm packing, folding the thing over, yeah. if Sarah's around, be like, babe, jump on that end. You That's know what, what I mean? I because do. just to get the canvas in and that a little Correct. bit easier. If we're, being, if we're being perfectly honest, yeah, you can do it, no dramas, one person. And yeah. me, I don't really struggle with the, the weight, I'll just push the thing yeah. over. Yeah. But you always find it's easier with two people. Like, yeah. yeah. But look, everything else, we've got it down pat. See, when we say it takes five minutes to open up, it generally takes five minutes all the time, not during yeah, a race. Not sometimes, but yeah. what happens is, we've got it down pat, Belinda and I, we don't communicate. Mm. It's not, babe, give me a hand here, and yeah, babe, you can just you do, do that. It. We just do it. Yep. I've got a job to do, a role. Yep. I, we are both open it up. Yep. Once it's open, I'll do everything else, and yep. Belinda will start opening up the fridge, and open up the, the stove, and get the chairs out, and pack the chairs. We're exactly Done. the same. One thing that I actually found that, you know, sometimes you run into, and that's the other thing that I actually love about it, it's like a little community. If we're driving through a town, somebody will come up, oh, I've got a Patriot. Yeah. Yeah. I was at a service station not long ago and a guy had a Patriot and I just waved and said, nice camper. And he recognised the face and he came over. He was so proud, so happy that yeah. he actually owned one. So it's a little community. But what I've noticed is everyone packs so different. Yep. Yeah we got a specific way of packing. I noticed that you and Sarah, every time yep. we got to get something of each other's trailer, mm -hmm. I'll walk over to your trailer expecting it to be there, or Belinda will walk over there, and yeah. it's like, oh, where do you keep it, Sarah? Or Sarah will come over to ours to get a, yeah. anything. Or we don't have that, or you got this. I think yeah, so it's just everyone's But where you're, you're pretty minimalistic when it comes to camping, same as, same as what I am. And I think, oh, obviously, I'll probably get it from you. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but we don't take a lot of stuff, do we? We don't need a lot of stuff. It's just, we don't camp the most that we camp is one or two nights. We're always on the in, move. In one location. In yeah. one location. Yeah, That's the beauty well. about it, because what we do is we'll end up around a lake. Mm. And for some strange reason, I don't even know why, we we'll wake up next morning and we wonder, what would it be like from that angle, wake, waking up? Mm. From that point. Mm. So we just pack up and move around if we're yep. going to stay there for two or three nights. Yep. We don't want to stay and see the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. And that's what makes it so easy. With that's, the big rig, it makes it that much harder. That's the difference. Uh, probably last thing I want to ask you about, and again, you're going to be pretty biased here, um, quality, build quality of the Patriot Camper. <clears throat> well. Which, and give it, give it to me straight, Dad. Because if, it, if it's not good, it's probably you, you failed. <laughs> oh, I, I definitely haven't failed, <laughs> definitely. As you know, I've been in manufacturing my entire life. Dad done his apprenticeship as a toolmaker down at Ford in, uh, in Geelong. Last weekend, he went to the 50 year reunion um, down at Ford Motor Company yeah, in Geelong. That, that was awesome. That's, so that's how far back Dad's been in it. So yeah, go on, sorry. Manufacturing in Australia 
is the best there is that I've seen by worldwide standards. The product, I can't be proud of, I am biased, but with being biased, I can tell a good product from a bad product. I can't fault, I can't fault it. Mm. The quality that you put in there, sense of credit to you, you make me so proud of what you've done. Appreciate to the branding. Well, and that. the mere fact it's Australian made, I love that part. And, and we're, love so, it. we're so love focused it. on it. And obviously I get that from I get that from my dad, you know, we were brought up on where you know, I still go to the supermarket with Sarah still today and I still look at the jars and the packets and look for the Australian made stuff and put that in the trolley rack. And I definitely got that from you, because you used to do the same thing. You know what I mean? So it's you know the, the pride behind Australian manufacturing, keeping the, the money here in Australia, ensuring that our kids have got a future. The, the blue uh, collar workers, um, that's that's what Patriot's always been about. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. Got two questions for you. Favorite thing about your Patriot X3? That you can walk inside it. Yeah, number one. Number one. If there was anything that you could change, what would it be? Make it easier to open and close. Okay, good, perfect. Well, I'm gonna wrap that up here, Dad. I think that was a good one, that was a long one. So there's there's a bit of a, I don't know, an, 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 Im, an impartial conversation about how good patriots are. Um, but look, at the end of the day, guys, you get to hear it from somebody who lives and breathes the product, and he has for a very, very long time. Uh, there's nobody, nobody that I know that spent more time with a Patriot camper, heavily involved in the R&D, heavily involved in the development, heavily involved in, in the, the future state of the company as well, from a usability point of view. You know, from that grey nomad, that market sector that, you know, we want to we want to attract, you know, because we feel that caravans are not for everybody. Camper trailers are definitely not for everybody as well. It's really the customer who's got to make the decision on really what they want out of their life, yeah? And we see it happen a lot. So we see a lot of grey nomads that have come from caravans and come back to camper trailers because they're just not ready. But we also see it go the other way as well. But I think you gotta, you gotta make that decision for yourself. Um, I think there's some, some great insights there. Um, we'll fill this with a lot of Dad's trips. Keep watching Patriot Games, um, obviously as it keeps progressing. You see Dad on there uh, all the time and thanks for your time this morning, Dad, I appreciate it. My pleasure, son. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Take care.